the here are some of the weeds I'm working with it's a lamb's quarter you know these are just too big though they'll probably won't get ripped out here's where the tine the last tine ran right here Good morning guys, it is June the 8th today. And yesterday I started tine weeding my soybeans out here. So I just left the tractor back here in the field and walked back the lane here. So it was going pretty good. Um, I was covering some of the beans up just a little bit. So I had to tweak my settings. Um, again, this is uh, rye, the roots from the cereal rye. Um, I didn't manage it quite like I wanted, so there's a lot that gets caught up on the tines. Uh, it doesn't seem to affect too much until it starts building up a lot, and then um, then it'll start covering the beans up with dirt. Dirt will start dragging on the residue. So clean this out a little bit. Um, I wanted to show you what it looks like, what I did last night. The ends are always really bad. Um, I turn on them so much, uh, just compaction from everything. I mean, I'll get a lot of this stuff with the cultivator. Um, I tried to tie and weed it and hoe it really hard, but it's, it's just one of those things that the ends just get turned on so much, especially with 30 foot equipment, uh, turning on it quite a bit. I try to use the same tracks um, every time, trying to go the same direction so that I don't run so many beans over and not creating more weeds. Uh, so just real quick, big, big weeds like this, a tine weeder will not pull them out. They're rooted too deep. They're rooted probably the same depth as the beans. So they're just not gonna come out. Um, let's see if I can find a little one here. Yeah, see like that one, that one I got last night. So um, I'm trying to run the tines pretty aggressive, um, but when you run them aggressive, it, make, it throws more dirt. Um, see like these beans, they'll be fine they'll come out of that but um you know looking down through the row you know they're they're covered up a little bit more than than like these and the reason why these don't cover up so much is because this is a tire track row so there's not as much loose dirt to work with um so you know it, it can't the tines don't throw as much dirt over here you know it's um it's in between the tires or it's you know um over on the planter so the tires you know another tire track sets like over here so um there's a lot more loose dirt in here to, to work with and and that's why it can vary some of the beans a little bit but um i think they'll they'll grow out of that just fine as long as you're seeing green i think they'll come out of it okay but they're pretty clean. Um, it's slow going. I'm running about two and a half mile an hour. So um, it's pretty slow going. But I feel pretty good about most of the beans. Um, see like right here. There's a velvet leaf that I'm probably not even going to get him with the cultivator. Because it's too close to the row. So he didn't get ripped out. Um, but you know, it's, it's one of those timing things where, um, you know, I was working on the corn, cultivating the corn and, um, maybe should have been out here tine weeding beans, but it's just one of those timing things. Um, it'll all work out. Okay. 
maybe not as clean as what I'd hoped, but. Yeah, see, here's the, here's some of the weeds I'm working with. So lamb's quarter. You know, these are just too big. They they'll probably won't get ripped out. Here's where the tine, the last tine ran right here. So we'll uh, we'll get started, and I'll kind of show you some of the some of the settings and uh, just kind of an overview of uh, what I'm doing on beans. So as far as the settings on beans, um, it's pretty close to the same as the pre-emerge. I'm running them a little bit more aggressive, about an inch and three quarter of the ram showing. Um, that puts the tines a little bit more forward, um, gives them a little bit more pressure um, to, to dig the bigger weeds out, um, what I can dig out. So on the indicator, um, it's just a little bit uh, forward of um, forward of path, I guess. On the gauge wheel tires, I'm running in the third hole, two holes showing on the bottom. And that other side um, seemed like it wanted to dig in a little bit more. So they uh, make these uh, jam, I don't know if you call it jam nuts or um, a bolt that uh, I actually took the pin out and I'm running it about halfway between holes. So um, for some reason this side wanted to dig in a little bit more. Also, um, there were extensions on the ends. Um, because this is a foreign, uh, you know, made in Austria, um, it's in meters instead of feet. So to get it to 30 feet uh, to match a 12-row planter, um, they had to put extensions on these. It's just a, another little bar and one more tine on each one. Well, because these beds are exactly the same width on all of them, having that extension on the end made this heavier on the side on this one side. So um, both of the ends were digging in a little bit more and um, covering the beans up. So I took those off and it was still doing it. So I turned this turnbuckle. Um, to where you can see this will rock this way, but it won't come back too much towards the outside. Um, there again, it's, it's just one of those things. I'm going to have to figure out why it's doing it or um, maybe in the, could be in this big turnbuckle up there. Uh, maybe I need to, to mess with that a little bit. Um, but it should be able to rock both ways. And this one, um, kind of the same thing. This one, this one seems fine. Um, not sure why the other side is a little bit different. Um, it could even be as much as, as um, my three point link arms aren't level. I tried to get those level um, when I was running the rotary hoe. I put it in the shop and put a level on it, so. Um, but yeah, so those are kind of my settings. Um, we'll get running and I'll uh, show you a view from the cab. So different spots in the field. Um, I'm varying my speed a little bit. I'm running about 2.8 right now. Sometimes I have to go back to 2.6 or 2.5 if it's starting to cover the beans up. But it's doing a pretty good job. Sometimes I feel like I'm not sure whether I should even be out here, whether it's even worth my time. But then I think, you know, if I'm if I'm getting, even if I'm getting 10 weeds per row per pass, I mean that's that's still a substantial amount. So um, 
guess my time isn't worth a whole lot to me, so I sit in a tractor and make videos. <laughs> so, it's doing a pretty good job, so we'll just keep on going. I've got about probably 40 acres left, so it'll take me several more hours yet, but I'll be able to get this done today, and I'll probably go uh, hook up the cultivator, and um, I've got a transition field, first year transition, so probably start with that one since I had just been in here and let the soybeans, um, the ones that I kind of covered up a little bit, I'll let them come back up uh, before I cultivate them. So I'll get a few action shots uh, on the tine weeder, see what we can show you. So I don't think that I really um, explained what I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit here. So all the weeds that are in between the rows, I am not worried about. It really doesn't matter. Um, the cultivator's gonna get them, plus they're, they're big enough that the tine weeder's just not taking them out. So my concern right now, and the only reason I'm running this right now, is on probably about three inches on either side of the row, because that's about where my cultivator is gonna run, the cutaway discs. So anything that is in the row, or three inches to the side, that's really all I'm worried about. So, um, you know, most of this, I, I feel like I'm doing a good job. Um, there are places that the weeds just got too tall and um, and it, it didn't rip them out. See, like this, that that one's going to be, you know, whether I get him with the, the cultivator or not, I'm not real sure, but um, just things like that, you know, like this grass. Um, if I'm not getting them fully uprooted and out, I am for sure hurting them. So when the when the cultivator sweep comes along, it'll move enough dirt that, you know, he's already hurt. He's up already uprooted a little bit. He's just hanging on. And so I feel pretty good about that. So that's mainly all I'm trying to do is just get in the row and um, a couple years ago when I started looking at tine weeders and I saw videos of them going through standing beans, I thought, that there's no way, it'll rip the crop right out. Um, but these are six millimeter tines and they're, they're pretty, I mean, they're strong, you know, and, and that's how you set the tine pressure is, is with the hydraulic cylinders to angle them. But it's just going, it's just, they just kind of go right around the beans. Um, and yes, I could rip the beans out if I tried, um, but I've got it set in a way that they just, they just kind of, 
you know go right around the beans and the beans just flow through them and um, so that's that's pretty much um, the point of this see that right there I mean I just stopped and slowed down and I already got him so um, it's worth being out here but like I said a little bit ago it's you know sometimes it's hard to see whether it is worth being out here but anytime you can get some weeds um, that's what it's all about so um, I'm gonna finish the field but thank you guys for watching I appreciate it and I hope I made this one interesting see you on the next one